Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera kepada peserta dan juga penonton webinar World Skills Malaysia yang sedang mengikuti siaran langsung kita menerusi Zoom dan juga live Facebook di Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran. Terlebih dahulu saya perkenalkan diri Noriah binti Zakaria, Sekretari Unit Pertandingan Skills Malaysia Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran. Sekali lagi selamat datang ke Webinar World Skills Malaysia yang mana matlamat utama kita adalah untuk menyampaikan maklumat dan perkongsian pengetahuan bagi setiap bidang-bidang pertandingan kemahiran. Untuk maklumat memandangkan dengan kekangan pandemik COVID-19 yang melanda dunia, maka banyak pertandingan-pertandingan kemahiran yang dibatalkan dan banyak juga yang ditunda kepada tahun-tahun mendatang. Jadi World Skills International telah mengisytiharkan tahun ini adalah The Year of Innovation, Showcasing and Promotions kepada semua warga kemahiran seluruh dunia. Untuk makluman di peringkat kebangsaan, JPK menganjurkan World Skills Malaysia Belia dan Pengajar dan juga Junior Skills Malaysia JSM untuk peringkat menengah rendah. Manakala di peringkat antarabangsa, Malaysia aktif menyertai ASEAN Skills Competition, World Skills Asia dan juga pertandingan peringkat kemahiran tertinggi di dunia, World Skills Competition. Jadi pada petang ini, kita menganjurkan webinar merupakan perkongsian bagi pakar negara dari bidang cooking. Jadi pakar akan berkongsi maklumat dan juga pengalaman beliau kepada semua peserta webinar agar dapat menimba pengetahuan berkaitan aspek pertandingan sama ada di peringkat kebangsaan mahupun antarabangsa. Jadi para peserta sekalian sebelum kita meneruskan webinar ini ada beberapa perkara untuk kita kongsikan bersama dan beberapa pesanan untuk pengetahuan sekali, sekali lagi dimaklumkan siaran webinar ini disiarkan secara langsung di uh, menerusi Zoom dan juga live Facebook Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran. Para peserta dijemput untuk bertanya soalan di bahagian Q&A atau chat box. Elakkan menggunakan perkataan yang ringkas supaya soalan anda itu mudah difahami oleh sekretariat dan juga para peserta webinar yang lain. Jadi soalan nanti akan dipilih uh, secara rawak oleh sekretariat untuk diajukan kepada penceramah kita. Jadi uh, seterusnya berkaitan dengan isi gel hanya akan diberikan kepada peserta yang mengisi borang kehadiran webinar dan menjawab soalan penilaian di borang kehadiran sila rujuk ruangan chat bagi link tersebut di skrin anda. Nanti sekretariat akan pinkanlah uh, kita punya link tersebut. Jadi perlulah menjawab soalan-soalan tersebut dan pastikan anda mengikuti siaran ini sehingga tamat. Jadi bagi agenda webinar kita pada hari ini, kita akan pergi kepada klip ucapan aluan oleh pengarah bahagian pejabat pemantauan projek PMO. Kita akan ke agenda kedua iaitu sesi pembentangan oleh pakar negara dari bidang cooking dan akhirnya sesi Q&A. Para peserta dan juga penonton webinar sekalian, kita akan terus ke agenda pertama dengan paparan klip ucapan dari pengarah bahagian pejabat pemantauan projek Puan Hajah Zulia binti Darsung. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Terlebih dahulu, marilah kita sama-sama memanjatkan kesyukuran ke atas Kehadrat Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala kerana dengan izin dan limpah kurnianya dapat kita bersama-sama hadir dalam satu lagi program perkongsian ilmu iaitu Webinar Skills Malaysia 2021 yang dianjurkan oleh Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran JPK Kementerian Kerja Raya KKR dengan kerjasama Pusat Latihan Pengajar dan Kemahiran Lanjutan Sias. Webinar ini diadakan sempena dengan tema World Skills International Year of Innovation, Showcasing and Promotion. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, Webinar Skills Malaysia 2021 dibuat dalam talian secara maya mengikut di bidang kemahiran dan kita rancangkan pada tahun ini sebanyak 20 webinar yang akan diadakan. Ianya bertujuan untuk menyampaikan maklumat bagi setiap bidang yang dipertandingkan. Maklumat pertandingan ini penting bagi memastikan semua aktiviti pertandingan di peringkat agensi dapat berjalan dengan lancar. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian, ekoran pandemik COVID-19 yang melanda seluruh negara termasuklah Malaysia 
pada tahun 2020 pertandingan tidak dapat pertandingan peringkat kebangsaan tidak dapat dijalankan begitu juga dengan peringkat antarabangsa di mana pertandingan terpaksa ditunda dan ada yang dibatalkan Antara objektif program webinar Skills Malaysia 2021 ini adalah untuk memberi peluang kepada warga kemahiran untuk menimba pengetahuan mengenai pertandingan kemahiran, peringkat kebangsaan dan antarabangsa dari pakar yang berpengalaman dalam pertandingan peringkat kebangsaan dan juga antarabangsa. Kedua, meningkatkan pengetahuan para peserta jurulatih dan personel pertandingan tentang technical description, test project, senarai infrastruktur, skim pemarkahan dan juga maklumat tak maklumat teknikal dalam pertandingan. Dan semestinya webinar ini memberi pendedahan dan maklumat awal kepada para peserta yang telah mendaftar sebagai peserta untuk menghadapi pertandingan yang akan diadakan kelak. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, sasaran bagi program webinar Skills Malaysia 2021 ini adalah tenaga pengajar di pusat-pusat latihan kemahiran awam dan juga swasta, institut latihan pendidikan awam dan juga swasta, begitu juga dengan pelajar dan pengurusan. Untuk itu, saya mengucapkan tahniah kepada mereka yang mengikut program pada hari ini secara maya dan diharapkan informasi serta pelbagai maklumat dapat dimanfaatkan sepenuhnya. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian, akhir kata, setinggi-tinggi ucapan terima kasih kepada penceramah yang sudi hadir pada kali ini, berkongsi maklumat serta pengalaman yang berharga dalam program webinar ini. Harapan saya agar maklumat yang disampaikan ini dapat memberi manfaat kepada semua. Saya juga ingin mengucapkan syabas dan taniah kepada Urustia serta semua yang menjayakan webinar pada hari ini. Sokongan tuan-puan terhadap pertandingan kemahiran amat dihargai. Sekian saya sudahi dengan wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Demikianlah tadi klip ucapan Puan Hajar Zulia binti Dasun, pengarah JPK yang telah kita rakamkan lebih awal. Para peserta yang dihormati, tanpa meninggalkan masa kita ke agenda yang kedua iaitu sesi pembentangan dan taklimat oleh pakar negara dari bidang cooking, Chef Farouk bin Osman. Untuk makluman, sedikit biodata ringkas. Uh, Chef Farouk, beliau berkelulusan Master Degree in International Hospitality Management, University of Toulouse, Perancis. Sekarang menggang jawatan sebagai Senior Lecturer di Fakulti of Hospitality, Food and Leisure Management di Dallas University College. Berpengalaman luas selama hampir 24 tahun dalam bidang kulineri. Berpengalaman kerja di hotel dan restoran terkemuka luar negara di St. Gallen, Switzerland dan The Royal Garden Hotel St. Kensington, London. Manakala di dalam negara pernah bertugas di rangkaian Hotel Mines, Telawi Street Bistro dan Starwood Group of Hotel. Pengalaman beliau dalam bidang pertandingan kemahiran di peringkat kebangsaan sebagai hakim dan pengubah soalan pertandingan WSMB hampir 8 tahun turut dilantik sebagai pakar negara di ASEAN Skills Competition, ASC dan World Skills Competition WSC dalam tempoh yang sama. Kemuncak penjempayan beliau telah membawa peserta negara merangkup pingat gangsa di World Skills Competition WSC Abu Dhabi 2017. Dengan segala hormatnya, dipersilakan Chef Farouk. Assalamualaikum Chef. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Puan Nuria. Uh, sihat ke? Saya Alhamdulillah. Diberkati insyaAllah. Masa apa hari ini? Uh, oh. Solain steak. Diamantina. Oh, Quality. <laughs> boleh hantar ke, ke sekretariat lah hari ini? Uh, boleh insyaAllah. Boleh, boleh. Ada, okay. kita, saya ada beli diamantina punya chill solain. <laughs> insyaAllah. Okey Chef. Okay, kita teruskanlah dengan sesi pembentangan oleh Chef. Uh, dipersilakan. Terima kasih uh, Puan Nuria, selaku pengurusi majlis, uh, Puan Hajar Zulia, uh, pengarah, selaku pengarah Jabatan Pengadaan Pengakhiran, para hadirin hadirat, uh, muslimin muslimat, uh, ahli jawatan kuasa uh, webinar Jabatan Pengadaan Pengakhiran dan juga Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera buat semua 
para penonton, para hadirin yang hadir, yang tidak dapat hadir, yang hendak hadir tapi tidak dapat hadir, semoga diberkati semua dari dunia hingga akhirat. Insya-Allah uh, uh, bagi yang mengenali saya, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sekali lagi uh, salam rindu dari saya kepada semua. Dan bagi yang tidak mengenali saya, uh, nama diberi adalah Faruk bin Osman dan tanggungjawab diberi pula adalah selaku pakar negara dalam bidang cooking di pentas uh, pertandingan World Skills uh, di Malaysia, di peringkat ASEAN dan juga antarabangsa. Uh, lantikan jawatan adalah Senior Lecturer 1 di Sales University Malaysia. Um, walaupun uh, masa yang diberi uh, agak suntuk untuk kita bincangkan seluruh perkara tentang World Skill, uh, tapi uh, saya akan cuba <coughs> beri sedikit ringkasan dan juga sedikit pencerahan dan juga perkongsian tentang cerita-cerita yang telah kita lalui sepanjang tahun-tahun uh, berada di pentas dunia berperang dan ada kala kalah, ada kala menang, ada kala dapat balik uh, pingat emas, ada kala balik dengan tangan kosong. Ah tak ada soalan, maaf. Cooking tak pernah balik tangan kosong. Ah cooking tak pernah balik tangan kosong. Daripada ASEAN ke international, kita tak pernah bawa balik tangan kosong. Sentiasa ada je benda bawa balik. Ha, selain daripada oleh-oleh, insyaAllah. Baik, uh, I will actually present in English. Uh, we will mix up a bit here and there. Um, overview of the, of the, what do you call, of the test project and uh, what's going on in the world skills. You can actually have a look in, uh, in the website which is wsi.com, I think, .gov, something like that. But um, what is the most important thing uh, that we need to share today is your intangible preparation and also experience before we enter the, what you call the lion's den, or in international, in, in, in layman's term, before you enter the war zone. Because uh, we, we, always, uh, we always believe that when entering a competition, we are actually entering a war zone. So, kalau kita pergi perang, uh, takkan kita nak bawa pistol je, tak ada peluru. Uh, peluru pun bukan peluru calang-calang, kita kena ambil lah peluru yang power-power sikit. Uh, silver bullet ke kan? Kalau boleh, gold bullet lah. So, dapat gold medal. Kalau dapat silver bullet, dah jadi silver medal. Uh, jadi, kita kena, kalau bawa peluru gangsa, dapatlah dapat lah pingat gangsa. Dan kalau bawa peluru tembaga, dapatlah tembaga. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, we are in uh, trade cooking. Uh, we are we are like uh, number thirty-four trade in the world skills. There are about sixty-two trade, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we are always in Malaysian team. We are always aiming for gold, and a little bit of chronology of what we have done uh, since uh, since uh, myself and also Chef Sabri was involved those days. And now uh, Chef Sabri have stepped down, and I have to actually take over and also with a couple of other guys that's in the list. Um, we have actually started off uh, the world skills uh, in Jakarta, in ASEAN, uh, in Jakarta year 2012, where we brought back gold medal, uh, similarly to Hanoi in Vietnam. And then in 2016, we have uh, world skills in Malaysia that we are the host country in which is held in Kuala Lumpur in Maips. And recently, the, the, the last one that we had, we were supposed to have one in, last year in uh, Singapore with two of our candidates from UITM. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we have to withdraw or, or basically uh, postpone the competition. Now the, the competition is finally cancelled. Um, but so unfortunately, we can't attend Singapore. Uh, so the last uh, ASEAN skill that we went through is actually uh, in Bangkok, Thailand, where we also won gold. So basically, in ASEAN skills since year 2012, we have always came back with a gold medal. And we have always expect to come back with a gold in Singapore anyways for, for, for the ex or the future competitor who actually uh, got uh, turned down by the ASEAN skills Singapore. Don't worry, I think you are, the gold is in your heart anyway. So we, we've been there, uh, although the competition is cancelled physically. Uh, we know that we're going to win gold in Singapore anyways, and in the next ASEAN skill, and, and we will definitely win gold again. So this is the expectation that we have in ASEAN skill. And now, uh, moving forward, and in 2017, 
we managed to break the 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 what you call the record of a non medal in the world skills to have uh, to contribute a bronze medal to the country in the world skills Abu Dhabi in 2017 with Lajai as our competitor and myself as an expert and of course in every world skills that we went through in 2006, 2013 in the world world skills Leipzig in world skills Sao Paulo 2015 and in Kazan with last two years uh, I was actually we brought back medal of excellence uh, so when we have excellence that means the competitor is competent in that trade and above expectation however there's only couple of medal uh, what do you call it? medal uh, 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 ratio and also uh, quota so you cannot give like 10 gold medal although they have a difference of 0.5 marks so i can say straight away between the marks of the kazan competitor uh, between our competitor in kazan which got number 13 and be- between him and the number 1 the difference of mark is probably just about 6 or 7 marks so it is very crucial because every single thing is been taken into account and you have to go through almost uh, perfection and you have to go through without without a doubt there is no mistake to be done so of course uh, in the world skills we also have uh, what we call is award an additional award called a uh, best of nation whereby best of nation is actually uh, um, uh, the mark a competitor's mark who oh, sorry the highest mark for a competitor for that country so that means uh, like like i stated in the slide now in world skills asian jakarta in world skills leipzig in world skills asian hanoi in vietnam and world skills asian bangkok in thailand cooking competitor got the best of nation award because we won or we managed to get the highest mark among all the competitor in malaysia for for malaysian team so basically best of nation is an additional uh, additional award or medal given to a competitor in that nation who who have been awarded the highest mark among all the other competitor in other trade so cooking has so far gone through a very good background chronology in ex- and also uh, award winning and also uh, medal winning and brought back lots of accreditation to the country and now we are also in as a malaysian team has given a little bit of spark and a little bit of uh, 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 appearance in the world skills platform whereby before malaysian was just looked at the one who's just going to be like the top 30 or the top 40 and now we always remain either in the top 20 or in the top 10 so for the future competitor there's a there's a big shoe to fill in and of course uh, uh we have always been consistent with this and the key of the the consistency will be highlighted soon shortly okay and of course uh cooking trade is has been the most popular trade in the world skills whether it's in malaysia whether it's in asean whether it's in the international ground cooking trade has always been the most popular one i don't know why maybe because people like to see other people cooking Uh, I don't know about that. I, I don't have that kind of experience to see people cooking. Uh, I mean, in my point of view, it's a bit different from a public point of view. So maybe the one who's not in the trade, they really enjoy looking at that rushing and the adrenaline going on in the kitchen, whereby we start to cook. Some flame coming out, some smoke coming out. Somebody is in trouble here and there. Somebody cut their fingers here and there. So. anyway so the picture shown that this is the first time in cooking trade that uh, we have malaysian flag in the podium of abu dhabi uh, this is the 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 competitor now uh, competitor in he was in abu dhabi he was like jai he was a, he was a student from tilis university uh, he is actually my student and and he is now working in singapore doing very well and i'm telling you straight away it's not just about the competition it's not just about the rules it's not just about the test project it's not just about all these technical description items and all these technical values what's important is the heart that you have this is what this is what difference that this competitor have the heart of winning the spirit of winning and the 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 the, the ideology of never say no and you do not stop you do not stop no matter what no matter what you don't stop if you are out of idea go and find one if you are if you are hungry go and find food right same thing something like that you don't you don't just stop and say ah man i'm fed up i'm bored you'll never you, you never go to that direction 
And I'm telling you, this competitor, he have the motivation to go forward anytime, any day. And you have to have that heart, the heart of the eagerness to win, the, 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 the desire to win and to bring, to bring what? To bring proud to the nation, which is Malaysia. Because Malaysia, if we win the competition in the international ground, they will, they will actually uh, take into account as our, what do you call, our skill competency in the country. So, of course, uh, it's not easy to win. Uh, it is not like every way and you can just get gold medal. It requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of planning. It requires a lot of uh, ideas. It requires a lot of work. So, basically, uh, when we train competitors for, from the World Skills of Malaysia, we are actually training them for World Skills International. That is why you will see, you will feel the pinch of the World Skills Malaysia Belia from the Praklaya Khan to the final is actually adapted from the World Skills International and also the marking standard will be taken from the World Skills International because we are actually assuming the gold medalist for WSMB will be representing Malaysia for the ASEAN skill and will get gold, will get gold and then will get gold again in the World Skills International. We're not just looking for a uh, one-time approach or a one-night stand with a competitor. We're not interested in this. We're interested in, uh, in a commitment of at least two years of commitment because the, 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 the journey of a world skill starts from WSMB. You have to enter the Praklayakan first. Once you win the Praklayakan, then you go to the final. You go to the final, you get gold medal, then, or maybe gold and silver perhaps, or maybe gold to gold, whatever. But you get the top two. The top two of the WSMB final will go to represent Malaysia for the ASEAN skill. Okay. If there's no gold medal for the WSMB, that means you're nobody. Nobody is competent for the competition. We will not bring anyone to ASEAN skill. If we're not bringing anyone to ASEAN skill, probably we look for another platform to find somebody to go for the World Skills International because. In, in, unfortunately, in the WSMB platform that year, we could not find any candidate. So after you've been in the final uh, in, in WSMB, you get gold or, or the top uh, marks, and then you probably you represent Malaysia for the ASEAN skill. We will bring two competitors in the ASEAN skill. With the two competitors in the ASEAN skill, the highest one will actually go to the world skills, international. So between that two competitors in the ASEAN skill, you are actually competing among each other. You see, so uh, the because only one will go to the World Skills International, so the best will go unless you forfeit. So, World Skills Balia Malaysia example in 2019, and then it will work for World Skill ASEAN in 2020, and also World, World Skill International in 2021. So, ASEAN skill and World Skills International happens binally. WSMB or World Skill Nature Belia works every year. So usually we also we also it's also possible that we take the winner for WSMB 2019 and the winner for WSMB 2020 in example. So it depends how the organization goes and how it depends on how the mark of the competitor in the WSMB and how their performance is because we will not just bring any Tom Dick and Harry to go to the ASEAN skill because we expect when you come back with a gold medal that's it there's no compromise. Seriously, because there, there is either you, you, you win or you don't go. <laughs> Simple as it. This, this is the philosophy. And you have to commit two years. And usually one of the, one of the prominent, prominent compulsory, uh, uh, what you call, uh, law, number one law is no commitment with any boyfriend or girlfriend when you enter the world school. This is one. Because we, we have always gone through this uh, experience with a competitor that has uh, relationships with their boyfriend or girlfriend, they tend to lag their training, they tend to rush their training. They, they, I mean, they lost concentration, you see? Up to one stage, I'm telling you straight away, uh, there's one competitor that I had before with my student in Dallas. He feel that he had control of himself and also the timing. But then, uh, all of a sudden, I keep on seeing him on the phone every time during we are on training. So when I was asking him what you were doing, and then he said I was calling my girlfriend. So what happened is that I, I brought his girlfriend come to the kitchen and do a wash up for him. So 
he's, he will spend a time with his girlfriend in the kitchen. Since you don't want to break up, you don't want to wait for, for, for the worst girls to finish, you come and watch out for your boyfriend if you love him so much. There to do. And then after one month, they broke up. Maybe because girlfriend dia tak tahan kot, nak kena basuh pinggan. <laughs> hey, seriously, this happened in Taylor's, okay? I'm not joking. Eh? Because I'm probably I smile a lot now, but in the kitchen, I don't really do smile much because we are, we are in a serious business, okay? So, uh, and then, of course, uh, you have to spend a lot of time uh, with the with JBK as our organizer and our sponsor. They will actually bring us to... Uh, can motivate you know to bring you to 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 actually get you ready physically and mentally uh, this is also a great opportunity for you to not just to prepare yourself in the competition but also to prepare yourself as a person as an individual as an identity because the winner for 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 world skills must not just equip the skills must also equip with communication skills must also equip with personality personality is very important in world skills that is why one of the reasons why we brought back medals. We have personality. The moment you see, bam, Malaysian is there. So, okay, uh, we, we better be careful. So, we have to. Uh, the, the moment uh, it's it, the moment we step in, we have to make a statement already. This is the biggest point. That is why we we try our very best to get the most uh, top notch and perfect and also the most uh, elegant and very slick uniform for the competitors and the experts. Because the moment you step in, you'll create goosebumps around the community. Say, oh man, this Malaysia. Nanti kan orang tengok ni Malaysia lah, cebe je, pakai macam orang kampung je, ini macam ni nak menang gol. You see, because the first impression is also what we call a reverse psychology to other competitors and experts. It will create, oh wow. It will create, oh wow, this Malaysian team. Oh wow, they've improved so much. Ini adalah kata-kata competitor and expert-expert di world skills. Just by looking at us. We haven't talked yet. We haven't said anything yet. We don't have to say anything. Because our body language speaks in the world skills. So this is very important. So sometimes in world skills, even the expert and competitor, the more you talk, the more trouble you're going to get. So we just remain silent and we just shoot whenever we need to shoot. Macam pergi perang. Mana ada orang borak-borak masa pergi perang. Macam tu lah, we world skills. You can ask any competitor before. One of the law, one of the rules in the world skills, you are not allowed, the experts are not allowed to speak to the competitor. That means when I become a, uh, an expert, I also become a jury during the competition. I'm not allowed to speak to my competitor. This goes for everyone. If I'm seen talking to my competitor, there will be a penalty mark. I'll get a warning from the chief expert and probably uh, there will be a heavy penalty whereby I could be removed as a jury. But if I were to be removed as a jury, then probably the flag will be in trouble because we will lose one advantage mark from our own expert or our own jury. So these are the kind of things that you need to know what's going on in the world skills because um, there are a bit more. Um, we'll go through shortly later on uh, as how we go by. There's actually a lot that is not explained in the technical description. I mean, you can read the test project, you can read the technical description, it's always there in the website anyways. But what's the most important thing is our preparation to make sure that we are in a team and as a unit and we don't have to speak to win. And we just have what we call this mutual understanding between the expert, the coach for the competitor and also the competitor itself. Because usually the coach of the competitor is actually the lecturer of the competitor itself and will actually monitor what happened is that uh, usually uh, what happened is uh, uh, as an expert, uh, you also have a coach. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we're not saying that the coach is more important than the expert. And we're not saying that the expert is more important than the coach. Uh, over here, the most important thing is the competitor. You have to understand that straight away. Expert is nothing. We are just there to make sure that no one is stepping on your head. We are there to protect the competitor. We are there to do fair marking and judging to make sure the competition is done in a fair ground. Because the most important assets in this competition and organization is the competitor. So coach and expert is just there to support the competitor. Kita bukan nak masuk world skill ni nak cari uh, popularity. Tidak. Kalau, kalau niat utama 
seorang coach atau expert yang masuk dekat uh, world skill ni untuk mencari populariti, untuk mencari uh, promosi dan sebagainya, you're in the wrong game. You're in the wrong platform. I'm telling you, and you'll never come back with a gold medal because the idea is for you to protect the competitor, to take care of the competitor as if that he's a king. He is the asset of the country and is also asset for our goal, future gold medal. So it is very important that for us have to lay low and to train the competitor and make sure there's no dispute between these three triangles, between the expert, the coach, and the competitor. Usually what happens, the competitor will get a briefing from the expert about the world. This, we're talking about uh, the winner of WSMB that will go to ASEAN skill or the world skills. The coach will usually, uh, we just do one example, one scenario example that happened before uh, uh, in uh, UITM. Uh, we have UITM competitor. Uh, this is an example, okay? This is what happened last year. Because before this, most of it was actually Taylor student. So when when they are Taylor student, it's a bit easy for us to organize because I can I am the coach and I am the expert. So it's a bit dominant there. So when you have another student from another college, so I have to, or another institution, I have to work with this and to make sure that we are in uh, in, in, in one unit because uh, banyak kadang-kadang kita tengok di uh, dalam bidang-bidang yang lain coach bergaduh dengan expert expert tak puas hati dengan coach batukan coach gaduh dengan kompetitor pun ada kerana coach kompetitor gaduh dengan expert pun ada ini semua pening ini semua pening gaduh-gaduh ni because kita belum pergi perang ni kita dah gaduh sama kita macam mana kita nak perang dengan orang so we cannot uh, we cannot we cannot afford to have any dispute between this three person this is a super important uh, uh, position which is the most important thing the most important position is the competitor macam mana kalau coach dengan expert kalau gaduh nanti competitor dengan apa apa lah orang tua dua orang ni asyik nak gaduh nak, nak bertekak aje so this, this, this is the biggest problem sometimes we have so we are trying our very best to make sure that uh, the competitor runs smooth in their practice without having to have any headache and dispute between the politics going on with the expert and the coach and and and, and they can practice smoothly because any psychological uh, issue will also demotivate it will be will be uh, will be demote uh, on the competitor's kind of spiritual behavior so it's very important it's just, it's just not skills it also involves with spiritual behavior it also involves their adrenaline their energy their spiritual uh, motivation there's there's a lot of thing involved psychologically mentally sociology physiology all these are in because it all in and when all the positive ions come into the body and they will become a winner so usually what happen uh, uh, an expert will actually explain to the coach and the competitor about what's going on this is the guideline this is the outline this is what happened when uh, we had an experience with the UITM uh, students and also coach so we uh, i have explained or the expert explained um, uh, how things are done in the world skills in detail how test project should be and we have outlined and pre-discuss the skeleton of the ideology on the test project and then from there the competitor and the coach will go back to their training ground which is happens to be their campus uh, wherever they are and then they will train expert will come in and do visitation based on whenever they are they think that they are ready for us to visit so whatever the expert comes in whenever the sorry whenever the expert comes in whatever he says is dominant any dispute or argumentation that happen between the expert or disagreement between the expert and the coach must be settled there and then the biggest problem that we have sometimes the expert come and do visitation instruct the competitor while the coach is looking at but the coach is sitting down quietly and then the expert go home go back to uh, their own place and then while the coach and competitor train the coach say something else you know anything that that the coach and competitor change without the knowledge of the expert must be highlighted that means if i were to say okay the the recipe that you've done for the cream of mushroom soup you must add 10 millimeter more of cream and then bila expert balik and then coach cakap 10 millimeter tak cukup 
tambah lagi 50 ml. 10 ml mana cukup ini expert mana tahu apa. So aku coach kau. Jalan, si coach kau. So when you attitude you have a problem. If you don't follow what the expert is saying, then you want to do your own way, then why don't you become the expert? You want to apply to become an expert. Simple as that. So you when when you when 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 you create when a coach create something like that then it will be a trouble usually we will discuss okay the, the coach say a the expert say b so okay why don't we do like this like this so, so maybe the expert can agree with what the coach is saying we're not saying that the coach is 100% correct but this is cooking for heaven's sake it's very subjective some things might, that the expert might might mislook and all of a sudden the coach have a little bit of idea because sometimes the coach also have an experience in in some of world skills competition so it's very important to protect the 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 what you call the the spiritual behavior of the competitor itself so for, for us not to show the our differences in this organization because the coach might have in a different background the expert might go in a bit different background but i'm telling you straight away whenever you're in a, in the world skills we have to put all our background aside and we have to learn it drink sleep cook in a world skills ideology because world skills have its own ideology through its test project so you have to have you have to know the marking scheme the, the the expectation of the jury but the expectation of the jury is very simple you have to do super you have to do super because uh, if you just do good They'll give you example. Yeah, marking system for 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 subjective marking is zero, one, two, three, right? If you're good, they give you two because two is mid industry standard. Number one, average in industry standard. Zero is below industry standard. Number three, excellent and above industry standard. So that means. When 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 the when the marking scheme say excellent, excellent means almost to perfection. Of course, we know that nothing is perfect, but the biggest problem is we have to go to that direction. Okay, we'll discuss that a bit detail later. So, the test project. Commonly, uh, we have worked with sixteen hours of test pro sixteen hours of worth of test project that is divided into four days. Either you have four hours a day, or four hours, two days, and then the third day is eight hours. It depends on the organization. It depends on the expert forum, and also depends on what happened in uh, in the in the world skills organization and setup. Because there are a possibility that that sixteen hours become Three days, and there are possibility in the world skills as well that sixteen hours becomes two days. But whatever it is, usually we have a standard of sixteen hours of test project. Uh, although we can do more up to twenty one hours, we can do lesser about fourteen hours. But uh, in the world skills, is standard that we use sixteen hours test project. Uh, most of the experts do not uh, agree to do less or more. It has been like that. I've been until from since Leipzig until until Sao Paulo and until Kazan. They believe in that 16 hours. And usually, when we do the test project, that 16 hours is separated into four days. But in case if there's no enough facility or there's too many competitor to 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 suit up into the 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 facility of the kitchen setup, so they might change. This is this is. Off and on, it will update in the expert forum when when closer to the competition or three months before the competition when they set it up. So, like I mentioned before, the World Skills ASEAN, we will bring uh, two competitor and two experts to come in. Uh, I was uh, we were actually uh, appointed as a chief expert for Bangkok, and uh, I'm supposed to become the chief expert for ASEAN Skills Singapore as well. But yeah, but unfortunately, Singapore uh, World Skill uh, sorry uh, World Skills ASEAN Singapore is not happening. But um, I'll tell you a bit more about my experience in the world uh, as a chief expert in the World Skills ASEAN. It's very uh, intriguing. Uh, Chef Buniman was there to also become my right hand man, and of course he is actually the wings that I could fly in in Bangkok those, uh, at that that time. Um, 
and obviously uh, one expert is never enough in ASEAN skill and of course uh, in the world skills international now we have uh, we can only bring one competitor and one expert um, world skills ASEAN or the world skills itself is very uh, is very challenging in the sense of not to say the politics involved is also about expectation because when 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 a competitor comes in the only thing that's going on in the jury's mind is actually to find mistake they will try their very best to find any mistake that you are, you 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 are doing setiap kesilapan setiap uh, hiperincian di dalam semasa dalam uh, petak competition tu petak pertandingan tu akan dia big example People have habit, our competitors have habit of turning on the stove. Turning on the stove, but then remove the pot, but the stove is still on. Right? When the stove is on, but there's no pot on it and there's nothing cooking on top of an open burner stove top, there will be mark deduction. Why? This is wastages. Against energy. You're wasting energy, you're wasting gas. And plus, on top of that, double double uh, deduction because there will be one more team of experts who are in charge of hygiene and safety they'll deduct oh very dangerous you open up a burner without any without uh, without anything on cooking so in in the world skills uh, expert is been uh, divided into groups of uh, segments of marking system so we have uh, we have a tasting jury we have a visual appeal jury we have a health and safety jury we have ordering jury we have a, what do you call um, the one who actually take care of your hygiene and cleanliness the one that take care of your organization so we have about 6 to 7 group of jury so example with the the one that open burner right you have two groups deducting your marks and these are objective marking objective marking is either yes or no so yes or no the biggest problem is that are you practicing hygiene no is that yes or no so uh, are you practicing safety standards yes or no that's it are you practicing a good arrangement hcp in your fridge yes or no that's it you arrange your items in the fridge you have a raw meat on top and vegetable underneath that's it and then on top of that they also have a bad habit in the hygiene so bad habit means rubbing your nose the biggest problem that we have uh, we, we also have a big mark deduction is the one who have yang pakai cumata so tangan macam ni tangan tangan tu betulkan cumata tapi dia cakap itu hygiene problem because when you are working you are having a sweat when you sweat your 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 spectacles uh, go down a little bit right on the nose on the on the on on, on, the, on your nose here so the moment it goes down you get distracted so you you tend to you know this is a very bad habit uh, we can say a, a habit not to say bad habit but in the world skills they call it bad habit but it's a habit for people who wear glasses tapi dalam bidang masakan ni dia tak boleh you cannot you cannot uh, do that and some some will be like that the moment you touch your face you have to wash your hand simple as that so uh, all these are criteria that you must be careful of course there are much more detailed criteria where i which i uh, which i i cannot mention one one by one because if we i would to go through the marking scheme one by one we probably finish tomorrow midnight because there are so many columns and so many lines to go through but one of it is the general hscp standards and then you have the general hygiene of course your uniform these are the, the, the normal thing that we practice in college, the normal things that we practice in the industry, basically. But the, the, the thing that I will highlight is the thing that you might not uh, even guess or even know what's going on. Like example, that opens open burner. You know, kita, kita masak, tapi stove tu terbuka. Tapi kita alih, tu stove tu biar je terbuka. Senang, nanti tak payah nak pusing-pusing lagi. People have that ideology, but in the world skills is two way mark deduction one is wasting of energy another one is dangerous in hazardous because the burner is open because the burner when the burner is open 
when you try to take another pot from the other side of the of the of the of the stove top you will actually can can burn your hand can burn your arm although although that does not happen but the jury is actually arguing this fact in the jury room to deduct your mark because that happened they will say oh, what if what if this happened what if that happened so when you are creating that problem the what if could come in in the jury room to argue so when 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 nobody else argue then they, they will continue to deduct your mark you see so example uh, you don't wear a socks you don't wear socks in the in, in in the competition there are we have we have a competitor who doesn't wear socks i don't know why uh, but not our competitor of course our competitor so dalam pakai so when you don't wear socks number one is hygiene number two is safety so another two double deduction so this is things that you must understand and you must know uh, when you're doing world skills because every single thing from top of your head to the bottom of your feet is counted and is been looked into and that is why we always believe in perfection in the competition although allah yang maha sempurna yang tidak ada makhluk yang sempurna selain daripada allah tetapi selain daripada allah allah bukan makhluk jadi you know, what i'm trying to say is that uh, you have to reach for that perfection although perfection doesn't exist in our human nature but you have to make sure you die trying and die not knowing this is this is the philosophy that we have in the kitchen when we practice practice and practice practice because you will get bored i'm telling you straight away as a competitor you will get bored at one stage when you practice because you are doing the same thing we 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 brainstorm and then we have uh, once we practice 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 and then we lock the recipe once we lock the recipe you just have to continue doing the same thing over how many years probably one year two years you probably do have to do the same thing and you practice it's like um it's like you know when 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 we have when we have a a a water that is dripping from a rooftop to the stone right uh that water is so soft that uh it doesn't give you any effect on the rock for a few months but after one year you will see that rock will little bit become a bit affected by the water droplets dia akan terhakis itulah kesan latihan kita tak nampak benda tu kita berlatih hari-hari kita kopek buah hari-hari kita uh, kita masak sup hari-hari kita buat ni hari-hari kita buat crispy garnish hari-hari kita buat mashed potato tapi without realizing from the first time that you do your mashed potato it takes you about 10 minutes after one year of doing a mashed potato almost every day we can say 300 days in a uh, 300 days so if you if you if you don't rest you do 365 days of mashed potato and from that 10 minutes probably will take you just another 4 minutes to do mashed potato so this is the the idea of practice so when we practice more it will uh, we without without noticing it will affect on our skills and also our speed if you are consistent and when you are improving in your speed as you are practicing we can add more item to your test project the garnishes or decoration this is super important because these additional garnishes and 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 uh, garnishes and also decoration will actually enhance your presentation and also make your plate a bit more into a perfection side because if we just follow 100% on a test project and just out you go to the jury you just get minimum base mark 50% that's it in order to get gold you need to have you need to score at least 50% perfect mark 50% perfect mark that means you must have a full mark on 50% of the criteria at least so this is uh, uh, this is something that you need to know so if you the, the rest of the thing if you get two and one uh, usually two if you if 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 50% of your mark is in a perfect score the rest of the mark i'm telling you straight away you're going to get two you never get one or zero because that 50% of perfect mark shows that you are very consistent 
simple as that. It is, it is very difficult to understand, but somehow when you score in that manner, you will actually be there. You are on top. So perfection is, is a lot of little things done well. So every single thing, even how you stand while peeling your onion, how you stand while peeling your garlic, how you stand while you cook or you saute your potatoes, how you stand and in front of the oven, how you open up the oven, how you open up the fridge, how you run from one area to another area, how you walk from part A to part B, how you wash up, how you turn on the sink, how you close the drawer of the chiller, how you close the door of your oven. Every single thing counts and every single step that you make inside that competition counts because we will count every single minute that you spend in that competition box because every single minute counts. You will have four hours, example, in one, in, one, in one day. In that four hours, you'll probably do two part of your test project. Example, you have one soup, one appetizer, or you have one appetizer and one finger food, right? So you are given half an hour, uh, sorry, you are given 15 minutes uh, before and 15 minutes after. That means 15 minutes before to set up your station. And then 15 minutes after the competition to clean up. And then you must go out from the competition box. Clean. That's how you first came in. You cannot just leave and just take your own time when you finish. That is why we are pushing everyone in WSMB to clean up and go. Dia tak boleh nak lepak-lepak, tak boleh nak buang masa, sambal, walaupun dah habis. No. Because we have marks taken down into people who do not leave their kitchen in a clean manner. Although in WSMB, we do not practice that at 100%, kita banyak tutup sebelah mata je against hygiene and also uh, uh, your timing value in your when you leave the kitchen because I'm telling you straight away from my past experience in WSMB, saya pernah cakap dengan pihak juri, kalau kita ambil uh, penelitian atau perincian uh, about hygiene uh, semasa WSMB, tak ada orang yang akan pergi ke WSMB. Tak ada orang yang akan dapat medal. So, masa dia layak ke WSM, uh, bila dia layak ke ASEAN Skill, baru kita mula uh, asah tentang hygiene dan apa-apa kelemahan yang dia ada. Tapi biasanya, uh, the medalist untuk uh, WSMB ni memang hygiene semua memang tip-top lah. Uh, that's one, one thing for sure. Tapi we, we we don't really take into really into account of the the timing of cleaning out and everything. We, we are we are basically kita banyak lebih bertolak ansur di WSMB. Tapi when you are in W World Skills ASEAN and World Skills International, there's no way we can compromise hygiene. And you have to do in a sense of perfection. There's no way that we can settle with good. Okay, we're good. Kalau dia tak ada wow factor dalam dia punya uh, plating up and dia punya presentation uh, dan dia punya rasa, if there's no wow factor, we're not, go, we're not going to the competition. I'll tell you a story. In Jakarta. Okay, Jakarta was in 2012, right? Yeah, that is. Okay, 2012. Jakarta happened in 2012. This is the uh, second ASEAN skill that we went through, uh, organized by, I mean, handled by JPK. Uh, because JPK took over since uh, was in London, if I'm not mistaken, can't recall. So, but anyways, uh, and then uh, Taylor's student was actually selected to go to ASEAN Skill in Jakarta, together with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, with a college community, uh, a, a girl from college community, Langkawi, uh, if I'm not something like that. So, uh, both of them did very well. Uh, the, the girl came out with a medal of excellence and uh, the Taylor student competitor uh, came back with a gold medal. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a hanky-panky going on in the jury area. That time was my first time together with Chef Sabri. Chef Sabri was the, the main expert. I was the second, uh, second person. And the beauty of this uh, uh, of, of, of the whole argumentation in the jury room is that um, the other country is actually fighting for the Malaysian competitor. Because the Malaysian competitor did so well 
that after the second day of the competition, the, comp the, the juries and experts just go behind me and pat, is this your boy? Huh? I think this one gold medal. After the third day, they say definitely this one gold medal. If the jury, among the jury, go and go to my shoulder and impact my back, you're competitive to do very well. You're competitive to do very good. In is more politic. Because they will say, this is very good. Okay, dalam pemakahan, they bagi kosong. Satu, kosong satu. But if you do very well, you do exceptionally well, I don't have to say anything. The jury will come to me and say something that your, comp your competitor will get gold. And at the end of the day, if the competitor don't get gold, because what happened is that um, on the final day of the competition, you have competition day one, day two, day three, day, day four. After that, is the, is the jury expert kind of, while, 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 while the competitor go for excursion and all these outing, because they finish their competition, uh, uh, the expert will actually come back the next day to have a meeting and to have an agreement with the marks. So the expert will actually got to know the, the standing of the marks for, for everyone those days. So uh, nowadays, everyone will only see their own, their own mark because the problem is people have a dispute. <laughs> so they, they stop that straight away. So uh, we can see who's ranking number one, who's ranking number two. They, but they stopped that recently, so everyone can only see their own mark. Although some trade would be able to do that and be able to see the ranking before the final announcement, of course, we have our mouth zip. And every expert have to agree with this result. So the beauty of it, the first time when happened, the first time it happened uh, uh, in, in, in Jakarta, Malaysia competitor got number four. His name is Kim Lun. He's my student. He's got number four. Indonesia got number one and number two. Number three was, uh, if you're not mistaken, was Vietnam. So we nampak lah, yang Vietnam ni macam pakat pakat dengan dengan Indo, and of course. Indonesian has actually lobby out the, the gold and, and silver. So Malaysia got what? Medal of Excellence at number four, not even a bronze. And then the moment everyone saw that result, everyone put down their paper and look at me. Chef, you agree at uh, the, the, the result? <laughs> and I say, at that time, I was not the chief expert, I was just an expert. Chef Sabri was the main expert. And then uh, I was very quiet because of my first experience in, in ASEAN skill, so I remain very passive. Although uh, they don't even know that was actually my competitor, apart from the Singaporean uh, expert, because I know that Singaporean expert. Um, the rest, uh, we have Philippines, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, uh, not Sri Lanka, sorry, Cambodia, Myanmar, uh, sorry again, Singapore, Philippines, Brunei, uh, Thailand, uh, Myanmar, uh, sorry, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. So uh, Singapore said to me, this, this result is, is tipu. Because the Indonesian competitor burned his chocolate cake in one of the modules. And another competitor cut their hand deeply and have to have a 20 minutes break. It means overtime break. So that 20 minutes given to him extra after he after the official timing finish. So when you cut your finger in the world skills, there's also a mark deduction, which is called under safety. Although it's an accident, but they say you're not careful. That means you are there is counted as negligent, kecuaian. So kita tak boleh cuai. Walau cuai pun tak boleh. Si cuai pun kecuaian kita dalam competition pun menjadi kesalahan. And this is the biggest thing about world skills. I'm not saying it's the beauty of it, but it's, I don't agree with it. I seriously don't agree that when, when, when a competitor had an accident, you should get a mark deduction because dah lah, dia potong tangan. Lagi kena potong markah pula. Aduh, dua kali potong. Lagi pening. So, and competitor knows that. When the competitor knows that he cut his hand and he knows inside him, he's been briefed before during his practice, that when I cut my hand, there will be mark deduction. So when bila dia tahu secara secara mental yang dia pun akan kehilangan markah dia punya motivasi dia punya motivasi tu akan akan jatuh. 
dia punya sense of motivation, dia punya spiritual behavior pun akan uh, akan akan turun secara tak langsung. So this is very intriguing. That is why it should not happen in the first place. This is the the whole idea and concept. So competitor number dua tu, he actually deep has a deep cut, uh, and then uh, he had about 15-20 minutes break, and dua-dua dapat bronze dengan uh, sorry dua-dua dapat gold dengan silver. Satu kick hangus, hangus tak boleh makan. The expert in the tasting room, including myself, would actually spit out that cake because cannot eat, and everyone gives zero for him on the tasting of his cake. And macam mana dia boleh dapat gold? So it was very, it was very in, uh, intriguing. It was very alarming in the jury room. Uh, but the beauty of it, Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, and Brunei fight for Malaysia. They fight for Malaysia. They say, we don't agree. We agree only if Malaysia get gold. I did not say this. Chef Sabri did not say that. We will remain quiet because I was the first time, like I mentioned, Chef Sabri is being very passive because he, he needs to take care of, uh, of many other things because he was the chief expert. He was not involved much on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the marking scheme. He was more involved in the technical side in taking care of the organization of the, of the, of the what you call, of the, of the whole competition and also the jury. Because sometimes you have other small, small issues that you have to handle. So <clears throat> I, was, I was a bit stunned when I see these attributes of honesty and integrity. Because we know for sure at that time we get the result, Indonesia Tipu on their marking. But the jury, the panel jury and the judges of expert and an expert must agree to that marks. If they don't agree to that marks, that means there's a, we cannot settle the trade. The trade cannot be deemed as complete. So we have to settle it. Everyone have to sign this marking result, uh, the marks and the result of the trade. Then the trade can go on to the onto the podium, onto the closing ceremony. If not, the closing ceremony will happen and cooking will become masala. So it, this has always happened. I mean, uh, uh, this is the raw, raw information about the competition. I only tell you about Jakarta, okay? I won't share you about Hanoi and, and, and Leipzig and, and Abu Dhabi and what happened in Kazan. The life is a bit more complex there because if you go to ASEAN skill, the politics among the jury is very direct. But if you go to World Skills International, the politics is even more, uh, they're a bit halus. So, kita as an expert have to be very, very diligent, have to be very alert. And communication and language skills is super important because you need to argue. Because people are pinpointing your competitor. People are are looking for mistakes on your competitor. And some of the mistake is not relevant. Some of the mistake even doesn't happen. They create that mistake to just to deduct your competitor's mark. Some explain like that. And it happened, this happened in World Skills International. They just create that storyline. So in order for them to deduct your competitor's mark, because why? They don't want you to get the medal. So, but people will argue with this kind of people when when they know that your competitor is a top notch what like what happened in jakarta when your competitor is so well from the second day and the third day they already know this guy is having will definitely have the gold medal you don't need to fight for him anymore because other country expert will actually fight for you that's what happened in jakarta so uh, the philippines thailand and and brunei and singapore uh, uh, fight for the Malaysian competitor. Say, okay, we have a dispute. Let's bring out the raw mark. So we ask the chief. Uh, we, we ask the chief expert. Uh, sorry, uh, the chief expert was. Uh, this, sorry, the chief expert was actually an Indonesian uh, expert. Uh, chef Sabri was his assistant, if I'm thinking about that. So uh, we we call upon him, and we ask for the raw mark. We asked for the raw mark, and then you know what he say? Uh, we I left it at home. Tinggal rumah, pak. If you want to go back, it'll be a big traffic jam. It'll take about three hours. Don't worry, we will wait. So we waited. We waited, and Chef Sabri and I come back 
from the competition hall to our room in uh, to our hotel 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Just because to make sure that we double check everything. Yes, we have double checked all the raw marks and we only check uh, the Indonesian competitor and the Malaysian competitor. It's true, they change the marks of the Malaysian competitor because whenever the Malaysian competitor get three, they pull it down to one. So we had, uh, we had, uh, we had a big uh, uh, argumentation at the time. So it, that is now the, shoulder, uh, the, the burden is fall on the shoulder of the expert. It's up to us to fight. So Chef Sabri and I was fighting and we want to make sure that this is changed. And then they say, okay, the CIS, CIS room is actually the competition uh, information system whereby they do their, uh, the marking. So the CIS team or the, the, the technical computer team will only open at 6 a.m. So we came back at 3 a.m. and we come back to the competition hall just to make sure that we have a fresh print of the new result at 6 a.m. And we actually waited. Chef Sabri and I actually literally waited in front of the uh, in front of the uh, of the uh, of the CIS room or the competition information system room, whereby they they officially print our result. And then, when they print, they still put Indonesia number one, but Malaysia number two, but we still get the gold. And then we argue again. We argue, argue, and argue, and then we 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 fight. Actually, we fight for the Malaysian flag, because we know for sure. The, the Malaysian competitor should get gold. So this is now our duty as an expert to fight for him. Because why? Because he did so well and all the other experts and the majority of the experts has agreed even without looking at the result that the Malaysian competitor should get gold. This is the direction that we want to portray and we want to do. Even belum habis competition, orang dah cakap, they need come from gold. Because as a chef, you can know. You, you are there judging for four days. You, you have actually literally see 100% of the competitor going around. And you actually see who is good, who is not good. Who will get gold, you think. You will assume. So if you do well, if the competition do to that perfection level, no one will question you. And if you don't, deserve, if you don't, uh, if you don't get the gold or the medal that you deserve, definitely they will fight for you. That's one thing for sure. This is the idea. We have to do above expectation, above okay. We have to do, like I mentioned, you just have to be wow. You just have to wow. Your items have to be completely wow from the moment you come in during the orientation until the moment or the last step that you left. This happens almost every ASEAN skill that we have done. Go through. World skills is a bit different. Uh, world skills is a bit more complex. The story is a bit longer. Uh, for those of you who wants to know, probably can uh, PM me or call me up and uh, we can have a chat about what's going on in the actual world skills. But in ASEAN skill, most of the time, if there's any problem in the marking scheme, uh, the other expert in other country of the ASEAN actually fight for Malaysian competitor because to make sure that we get the goal that we deserve. This is the whole idea. If you deserve the goal, the competitor deserve the goal, they will get the goal. We don't get the goal through cheating. We don't get the goal through a back door. We don't get the goal through bribery. We don't get gold because I try to rub uh, other countries' shoulder. No way, man. I don't have time to do all this. Kita orang Islam. We want to win, we win properly. We win because we deserve to win. If I see that our competitor don't deserve to win, that means they don't deserve to win. Finish story. I'll go back and tell JBK, I'm sorry, the competitor is not competent enough. We made a mistake. What can we do? So that's the whole idea that you have to do above expectation. You have to do wow. You have to create wowness in your food, in, your, in, in every single aspect of the test project because it is super important because if you don't do that then you just remain as at a par level because the game that they play in the world skills is very intriguing it's very uh, 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 very smart sometimes uh, you know what happened in exa example uh, in hanoi in vietnam lagi teruk lampu padam blackout that time chef sabri was the uh, uh, chief expert correct in hanoi chef sabri was the chief expert so Chef Sabri was in the CIS room redoing the mark because we have a problem with the mark again. So I didn't know much about it because Chef Sabri was handling it. Tiba-tiba, 
blackout. Tapi yang blackout bukan the whole hall. Blackout tu cuma bilik CIS tu je. Oh, lepas tu dia cakap dengan Syafrin, don't worry Syaf, uh, you can go home. Uh, we will settle the marks. And then Syaf Zarbi cakap, mana boleh? I will wait until tomorrow morning. Uh, no, don't worry Syaf, you have a rest, you have a rest, don't worry. Uh, you can go back tomorrow, come in and we will print out the, the marks for you. And then saya, saya pun, uh, I was waiting outside of the CIS room and then Syaf Zarbi said at, at 2 a.m. Yeah, often, seriously, I'm telling you, experts during the actual world skills will have sleepless nights. Dekat Kazan, in Kazan, we came back 4 a.m. And we have to come back in the competition hall at 7 a.m. You can ask any expert. Uh, among, uh, ada yang tidur dekat competition hall pun ada. Uh, you can ask uh, Puan Junita from uh, from uh, CAT. You can ask welding punya expert. You can ask some other trade. Some of them actually sleep in the competition hall. Itu a bit, uh, one, this is a bit berserk and crazy to me lah. But in Kazan, I left because uh, there was a bit of a problem and I did, I totally ignore this problem and the chief expert was uh, mad at me. I don't care. I stand for my right. You know, if you're pissed off with me, I'm more pissed off to you. So what you want? <laughs> I mean, it's four o'clock a.m. You want to decide who gets gold, who gets silver. That's totally bullshit. I better go back and perform my tahajud, no? Or sleep even, even better than entertaining you guys. So uh, anyway, so... Um, Uh, in 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 Hanoi, blackout. So blackout, dia cakap, oh, semua uh, semua data kita hilang. So kita kena buat balik. So kena buat balik apa? Empat hari punya marking. Empat hari punya marking, kena kena key in balik. Oh, this is super ridiculous. So, uh, of course, obviously, when the next day come in, <laughs> then I'm get gold. <laughs> so, and then, that dispute happen again. So, Uh, Thailand, some other the ASEAN country actually fight for us Malaysian candidates. Say no, Malaysian is supposed to get gold. Vietnam cannot get gold. This is the statement in the jury room. Vietnam cannot get gold. Malaysia should get gold. This guy should get gold. So I didn't even uh, had a chance to 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 extend my defense for my competitor, and other country already stand behind me and say Malaysia should get gold. That's the idea. So even in the World Skills International, your candidate is good. And they will back it up. Uh, so this is the expert competency. But you must, as a competitor, you must do very well first. Because no one will back you up if you just serve silly food or you just serve okay food on your plate. If there's no wow factor on your plate, no one will fight for you. These people are not paid to fight for you. These people are supposed to fight for their own country and for their own flag. But instead, they fight for... Malaysia, you see, it's true. and high, high esteem, that high esteem of experts around ASEAN country or even the world skills community is for Malaysian candidate. This is our track record. And the moment we come into ASEAN skill, the moment we come into the world skills, people look at, okay, Malaysia, we better be careful with these guys. So something like that, that kind of impression, okay? And in cooking, uh, trade, it covers all aspects. You have to train from A to Z. Either appetizers, soup, canapé, finger food, main course to dessert. We won't be doing cakes much, but you will do something like a petit gâteau. You probably have to. And the idea of all these courses and all these uh, uh, of meals that you're going to have to do is actually innovation. You must stand at least 40% to 50% of your dishes is an innovation. Although the test project is actually segregated into uh, 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 traditional dishes, uh, original classical dishes, uh, some of it uh, also have modern technique, some of it have pasta. You have opportunity to innovate in the presentation side. You have opportunity to innovate on the recipe where they where they say okay we want a modern recipe so <laughs> the aspect of the of the of the test project will vary one aspect of test project day one will probably just do classical day two will do modern day four will do pasta and day day, day three would probably do three course meal something like that so they will give you extra freedom for some test project Uh, some aspect in the test project and they'll give you some stringent or some strict rules 
to follow or three recipe to follow uh, in some other aspect in the test project. So in the test project, usually we have about two to three, uh, sorry, two to three parts where that part is actually say, breaking down into smaller parts or criteria. So example, test project for, for, <laughs> for, for Kazan, uh, we have part one, part two, part three, or module, uh, part, part one, part A, part B, part C, part D. So part A is day one, part B is day two, part C is day three, part D is day four. And in part A, there'll be two aspects, which is, or two criteria, which is finger food and soup. And then uh, part B, there'll be two items again, fish course or fish main course and dessert. And then part C or part uh, day three, you'll have one main course and one appetizer or vegetarian main course, uh, sorry, vegetarian appetizer and a beef main course. So in part D or day four, you have three course menu, one appetizer, hot appetizer, hot main course, and of course a dessert, or maybe they'll say frozen dessert. And among that test project, there'll be a mystery item that will be only be announced during the competition or a day before the competition or we call it familiarization day. You, because when a competitor goes to a world skills, they do not just go for that four days of competition. They will spend about one and a half week in that country. You will enjoy, the, uh, the organizer will bring you around, you'll see the town, you'll see some uh, culture there. You know, it's, quite, it's going to be quite nice. It's not just 100% competition, competition, competition. But although you're supposed to be there for competition, competition, competition and get goal, 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 or if not, you don't come back. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, you get opportunity to look at the, you know, travel a bit here and there, have a look through what's going on in that country and that town. But uh, the whole idea of the test project is also, uh, uh, also to give you a bit of enhancement and learning experience through the recipe that you're exploring and practice. And uh, there are mystery items such as mystery fruit for dessert. There are mystery fish for the fish main course. There could be also mystery herbs for, uh, for the finger food. There also have been a mystery ingredient for the cream soup. There's also a, a, a time whereby you have a mystery protein for a main course. So there's a, every year, every two years, they will change this mystery item. Either you come in in the finger food or appetizer or a soup or even a main course, even for the dessert. They'll say, okay, mystery, commonly, uh, commonly for, uh, for dessert, they'll have mystery fruits. For finger food, they'll have you mystery herbs or mystery uh, ingredients even, and the ingredient to be made compulsory. Most of the time, the, the mystery ingredients to, make, to be made compulsory, if it's a mystery protein, then it must be the main item. But if it's on the finger food, appetizer or dessert, it could be a component of the main item. So that means it's a supplement. It doesn't have to be the main item. But if it's for a main course, usually it is actually a main item for your main course. That is the mystery item, that commonly. But it changes every two years. It depends on the expert uh, discussion because the one who build up this test project is actually all the experts from the world skills. And the main book that you must refer to through this recipe building, the basics is the classical cooking in a modern way by Eugene Pauli. And also two of the book from his son called Philip Pauli, which is from the recipe and also technique and method. But the main, the main book for the world skills references is actually the book called The Classical Cooking in Modern Way by Eugene, by, authored by Eugene Pauli. This book, I'm sure uh, any chef or any uh, lecturer or any chef would familiarize with this book. This is actually a handbook for any cuisine or French cuisine that you're learning. Um, is a must have for the competitor. The competitor must read through. Uh, you must understand what is the Julien, what is the Brunois, what is the terminology because, because in Kazan you are required to do Julien, to do uh, half boiled egg, you have to, you, to, you have to do a, 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 what you call a, a, an egg dish or a seven minutes egg or six minute egg, you have to, you have to produce a Brunois, a Julien, a Tournay. So all these are taken from uh, Eugene Pauli cookbook and the technique and the recipe example, if you are in your test project, you have to have a, a pomme dauphinoise. Or, or gratinated potato, you have to refer the recipe in the in the Philip Pauli book or the Eugene Pauli book because there's a certain method and certain ingredients that you cannot add in. Some people add beef bacon, right? In their in their in their in their pomme dauphinoise. Some people add cream cheese. Some people add 
at parmesan cheese or whatever but you must follow the if the pomme de frina is stated inside a test project you must follow this book and follow only this book because if you put in some strange item or any additional item that is not in the book we will consider as a marked deduction because if you do you do not preserve the originality of the food see like example you're doing a satay pergi competition buat masak satay habis satay tak ada tak ada tak ada cucuk satay oh we you call it stir fry satay habis macam mana tak ada tak ada lidi satay how do you serve satay without lidi satay tadi bukan satay ini namanya uh, stir fried chicken or stir fried beef so satay you must you must have uh, mesti ada lidi satay tu mesti ada cucuk so kalau tak tidak so you have to preserve so some recipe in 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 test project in the test project you must preserve the originality of the recipe and the recipe must come from the classical cooking in a modern way by Eugene Pauli Philip Pauli or Philip Pauli but the main textbook for cooking trade in the world skills is actually referring to Eugene Pauli cookbook so and most of the recipe building or test project or if we have any dispute in the test project we'll refer to this book and on top of that uh, we always uh, as a malaysian competitor i have always trained my students and also the malaysian competitor to learn from these three books that you see in the screen uh, two by thomas keller one is the french laundry cookbook and one is the under pressure cookbook is a must have as well i'm sorry but we is a must have if you can't afford to buy the hard copy although the best is to have a hard copy if you don't have the money to buy the hard copy and you probably can afford to to take the soft copy online and then print it out in black and white as long as you have it hard copy we don't you do not refer i don't allow any competitor to refer to their tab or to their phone to read because life is a bit different when you have a hard copy and you read when you read from the screen and of course uh, the one of the prominent cookbook that we refer to in our recipe is actually the book by modernist cuisine and of course this book is super expensive it's about 2500 ringgit uh, 2500 ringgit uh, but you can get it online and you can print it out black and white under pressure cookbook costs you about uh, 350 ringgit for the second and the french laundry cookbook is another about 300 ringgit so it's also involved in money but you don't worry about that because these books uh, i have them and they have been with me for many many years and uh, it's a very good reference for any type of garnishes and anything that we do in in, in the world skills and it it actually uh, it actually work all the recipe work because sometimes you refer to some cookbook the recipe doesn't work so thomas keller's book uh, actually is something that i trust and we always use it as a reference and to see if we are lost in in our idea and also technique that we need to do for our test project and um, like i mentioned before and i mentioned again uh, we are not interested in the good of course we're interested in the goal uh, and only the sublime means uh, you cannot do just good in this world skills platform you have to do exceptionally well you have to do almost perfect in order for you to get that goal because we are still longing to get goal in the world skills international so far we only get bronze and that bronze apparently is a history and is a yesterday success now we are moving forward we need to go for that goal and get the first goal for the country and make malaysia proud in the podium in the world skills international thank you very much back to you miss organizer okay okay terima kasih kepada chef farok dengan pembentangan yang panjang lebar um, where he speaks more than his slide today chef uh, satu soalan dari saya lah saya pun baru tahu so if you wear glasses while you cooking and you keep touching it So it's considered bad habit. I just knew about this today. Yeah. <laughs> bad habit okay. and hygiene problem. Ah, uh, okay. Kita mungkin akan terus ke sesi soal jawab, Chef. Eh? Ada soalan-soalan yang akan dikemukakan di ruangan chat yang telah dipilih oleh Secretariat. Di Q&A. Ah, eh? uh, nanti kita baca di screen uh, soalan-soalan yang telah dipilih oleh Secretariat. Okay. So kita akan saksikan di screen sharing kita. Oh banyak soalannya. Boleh besarkan sikit. Saya boleh nampak tak? Boleh, boleh. Okey, soalan ada lima. Okey, hmm. uh, banyaknya soalan daripada Encik Sudirman. Uh, soalan pertama nanti saya bacakan semua nanti Chef jawablah ya. Okey, soalannya pertama bagaimana memastikan soalan kulineri ini sentiasa halal? Chef faham okay. ke soalan tu? Ah, uh, faham. Uh, <laughs> 
in the world skills uh, platform uh, all the food has always been halal if there's any alcoholic beverages involved uh, they will not make it as a compulsory ingredient itu dah memang faham daripada kita kat libzik lagi Chef Sabri dah fight and now we are continuously to fight because in respect of the Muslim competitor. Uh, we cannot, uh, they cannot, they cannot make the ingredients uh, of a non-halal ingredients to become compulsory in the test project. So far, there's no pork. Definitely, there's no pork in, in, the, in, in, in the competition. Uh, since Abu Dhabi, Kazan, we never had any issue with uh, halal items, uh, halal meat. We never have issue halal meat in Australia as well. We never had any halal issue in ASEAN skill too. So far, uh, halal has uh, halal uh, meat uh, that we are we are doing are always been sources from a halal supplier and is actually halal. So, kalau ada alcoholic beverage, even that is probably in the World Skills International, World Skills ASEAN memang tak ada. Uh, kalau ada alcohol macam orang bagi lah, orang letak dekat store punya list. Um, all this wine or whatever, tapi dia benda tu tidak compulsory dan tidak uh, tidak dimasukkan dalam kriteria dan test project. Maksudnya tak wajib. Jadi kita tak pakai, tak ada masalah. Okay, terus soalan keduanya, bagaimana kita dapat memasukkan resepi Malaysia dalam pertandingan? Sebagai contoh, katanya soalan menyediakan rendang daging, mungkin rendang harimau menangis ke macam oh. tu. Eh? Harimau menangis, nanti menangis. Tak boleh balik medal, eh, betul. Um, Actually, kita tertakluk kepada uh, bahan mentah yang telah disediakan oleh pihak juri atau expert dan kita tertakluk kepada uh, apa yang diperlukan oleh test projek. Uh, kebanyakannya test projek tidak pernah menyuruh kita untuk uh, menyediakan bahan uh, bahan yang uh, maksudnya menyediakan resipi tradisional daripada negara masing-masing. Tidak. Platform World Skill tidak ada ruang untuk kita menyediakan uh, 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 institusi makanan daripada negara masing-masing. Sebab memang memang world skill bukan begitu. Jadi kalau kita nak buat rendang ke international competition macam ni memang agak susah sebab juga kita deal dengan we have about 60% 70%. 70% of the jury semua orang-orang putih. Ah, yang Mak Saleh punya tang. Jadi kalau kita uh, bagi rendang takut dia tak biasa nanti terus dapat kosong. Then what happened to my bukus door plate? I did my bukus door in 2009 and I thought of bringing beef rendang to make to make a statement in the bukus door but instead they hate that rendang because they said uh, rendang is spicy and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Okay, soalan ketiga Chef. Bagaimana memastikan markah dari expert adalah tepat Maksudnya rasa, rasa setiap expert tu kan berlainan kan. Jadi lebih-lebih lagi mungkin lidah expert dari pelbagai negara. So adakah pemakahan penampilan um, hasil pemakanan tu akan mempengaruhi markah dari sudut rasa tu sendiri? Soalan daripada Encik Sudirman juga. Um, rasa ni kita memang uh, lain orang lain stres kan. Tapi dalam uh, dalam world skill ni dia punya rasa dia akan seakan sama sebab dia punya test project tu very guided. Jadi tu dia suruh buat Hollandis. Hollandis akan rasa macam Hollandis lah. Tapi uh, kalau kita rasa benda tu dia macam ni. Dalam testing room dia marking dia 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. This is what we call uh, subjective marking. Atau dia panggil Uh, satu measurement, measurement is actually objective marking and then kita ada satu lagi marking which is called a subjective uh, dah, dah lama tak pergi competition dah terlupa <laughs> sorry so subjective marking 0, 1, 2, 3 so kita ada tiga juri yang akan buat testing so juri pertama akan bagi kosong contoh juri kedua akan bagi dua, juri ketiga akan bagi tiga so at the end, at the end of the competition bila dah habis juri, dah habis, uh, dah habis testing tiga orang juri ni akan duduk sama-sama, dia akan discuss dia orang akan Discuss yang ini, diorang akan uh, wartakan markah masing-masing. So, uh, juri A bagi kosong. Sedangkan juri B dengan C bagi dua dengan tiga. So, kita ada gap. So, gap antara juri ni tak boleh lebih pada satu. Maknanya, dia kena ada satu atau dua atau tiga dengan dua. Kalau ada satu, dua, tiga atau kosong, dua, tiga, maknanya kita ada gap. Bila kita ada gap, 
Satu kena justify, tiga kena justify. So dua relax, dua, dua tu neutral. So dia sebanyak dekat berskill, banyak main dua je. Sebab dia nak neutral. Sebab bila dia tak dua, jarang orang beri kosong. Unless betul-betul tak boleh makan. So dia akan main safety je. Sebab kalau dia dia letak tiga, nanti tiba-tiba lagi dua juri bagi satu-satu, dia kena justify. Ataupun dia kena turun. Daripada tiga, dia kena jadi dua. So the justification based on majority of the jury. So macam mana rasa sedap tak sedap, this is depend on this three jury. So uh, this three jury will do that marking. And of course, the jury has pledged and dah angkat sumpah, cakap dia akan berlaku integrity dan sebagainya. Tapi so far, based on my experience on on on, on the tasting jury side in ASEAN skill, because dekat world skill kita guna third party, uh, that even nowadays we are using third party uh, uh, tasting jury, that means blind tasting. Maknanya para expert yang jadi juri ni tak masuk lagi untuk buat testing jika tangan jangan panggil juri daripada luar yang tak ada kena-mengena langsung dengan competition. So dari situ kita akan ada control. So uh, uh, kosong akan sama ada naik ke satu ataupun yang yang dua tu akan turun kepada satu. Macam itulah lebih kurang. So they, they will argue lah yang kosong ni akan argue lah kenapa dia bagi kosong yang dua ni akan argue kenapa dia bagi dua. So lazimnya Lazimnya dalam dalam juri punya discussion tu uh, yang kalau ada dua dua orang bagi satu satu orang bagi tiga yang tiga tu akan automatik turun dua sebab dua satu dua orang yang bagi satu ni tak akan naik kepada dua sebab ada nak dua orang naikkan mereka forget it dia akan turun yang tiga tu akan turun dan dan biasanya kalau ada dua dua atau kosong ada dua juri bagi dua, lepas tu uh, satu juri bagi kosong. Uh, yang kosong tu akan terus naik pada satu. Automatik. Oh. Dia tak lagi dia, dia tak lagi. Tapi kalau ada satu, dua, tiga, satu ni akan gaduh dengan tiga. Okay. Yang dua ni akan akan jadi moderator lah. Uh, itu kalau agak-agak tak boleh settle, chief expert, dia panggil chief expert. Oh, chief gitu. expert akan buat justification. Uh, kat sini yang susah. Sebab apa? Dua kepala ni dah degil. Uh, kalau macam dekat ASEAN sikit kat Bangkok tu, dua-dua saya hantuk kepala pak. Uh, okay, settle. <laughs> Okey. Betul lah Bigong. Okey, soalan terakhir daripada Cik Sudirman ni. Um, seperti yang ada chef cerita tadi pasal politik kan. Jadi bagaimana untuk mengatasi politik kotor expert itu uh, sendiri di masa pertandingan sebab bukankah pandangan expert ni boleh dipengaruhi lah kan oleh situasi hubungan antara negara tu. Ah uh, sebab tu saya kena jadi chief expert. <laughs> <laughs> Supaya kena adil dan tak sama. Uh, politik kotor ni is something that we cannot control. And unless we are the chief expert. We are the chief. Kalau kita chief expert, kita boleh kontrol. Sebab kalau kita jadi expert biasa je, atau juri biasa je, grup-grup hmm. lain tu kita tak tahu what's going on. Apa yang dia buat untuk kompetitor kita, kita pun tak tahu. Kadang-kadang, hmm. orang ni saling membunuh. Hmm. Dia saling membunuh, they, they will kill each other. So we we don't know what's going on. Tapi sebagai chief expert, kita boleh nampak apa yang dia orang marking dalam dalam satu hari atau dua hari, tiga hari tu. Jadi kita boleh tahu. So bila, bila as an expert or as an chief expert, when we see inconsistency of their marking, then we can call the expert and have a meeting during the competition. Eh, hey, macam contoh, day one atau day two, sorry, contoh day two. Day two punya marking a bit inconsistent to compare with day one. So the chief expert boleh panggil juri-juri atau expert yang sebab, okay, senang panggil expert lah. Sebab yang expert ni akan jadi juri dekat, dekat competition tu. Kita akan panggil, kita akan meeting. Eh, hey, look guys, what's going on? What happened? Why do you give? Why do you give this guy? Why do you give that guy? So kita akan mempersoalkan dia punya dia punya kaedah maki. Sebab dalam CIS pun sekarang dia boleh detect dalam komputer CIS tu dia boleh detect uh, expert ni punya inconsistency. Macam contoh, oh hari ni dia bagi semua tiga je. Besok tu dia bagi semua kosong satu je. Ah uh, betul. Nanti at the end of the competition after day four, CIS punya 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 teknologi ni dia akan detect. Oh juri ni tak betul cara dia judging. CS boleh detect. So kalau any jury yang yang cuba bermain kotor dalam marking scheme maknanya dia bila dia orang cuba main kotor, dia orang punya marking uh, kriteria tu dalam day 1 to day 3 day, day 2 day 3 day 4 tak consistent tau. Sebab dia orang mengikut perasaan dia orang marking. Dia orang tak ikut consistency of the competitor because competitor sentiasa consistent because dia dah train lama. Macam mana pun daripada negara mana pun memang selalu macam tu. Tapi bila expert ni yang tak jujur, bila bagi markah macam tanya-tanya ikut perasaan dia, CS punya sistem <coughs> boleh detect. Uh, itu teknologi lah. 
Uh, tapi sebagai chief expert, kita pun boleh tengok secara manual dan kita boleh panggil lah kenapa dan dia orang akan justify. Sebab tidak ada orang yang boleh mempersoalkan chief expert. Okay. Okay, uh, soalan uh, terakhir kita pada hari ini. Ya, chef, uh, saya tak tahulah kalau chef yang patut menjawabnya tapi soalan dari sahabat kita juga, Encik Budiman Bistari. Ya, Encik Budiman. Uh, langkah atau lanjutan persediaan kepada pelajar, adakah perlu untuk uh, tu, menakluki bahasa Inggeris atau apa, menguasai bahasa Inggeris dengan baiklah. Kita tahu bahawa test projek dan juga rujukan semuanya dalam bahasa Inggeris. Jadi mungkin ini lebih pada nasihat uh, ataupun pendapat chef apa pendekatan agensi atau sekolah dalam isu ini. Um, agensi dengan sekolah dan juga institusi itu itu terpulang kepada kepada mereka lah. Uh, apa yang saya boleh katakan bahasa Inggeris adalah wajib untuk satu-satu uh, kewajipan untuk uh, uh, me mewakili negara ke pentas world skills sebab satu dia kena faham baik-baik test projek sebab ada juga dalam world skills uh, yang mana kompetitor dan expert tak faham test projek bukan dia orang tak faham kerana dia orang tak mahir tapi dia orang tak faham kerana dia orang uh, tidak mahir berbahasa Inggeris jadi interpretation of the test project is misunderstood So contoh dia kena buat uh, uh, kanap uh, sorry dia kena buat uh, dia panggil um, peti fo peti fo dia kena buat enam kali tiga namanya enam pieces kali tiga jenis peti fo so dia perlu buat 18 pieces that means enam 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 tapi bila dia tak faham bahasa Inggeris dan dia tak faham interpretation of the test project dia buat 18 each peti fo. 18 18 18. End up apa dia buat? Dia dia buat style banquet lah. Potong jalan, potong jalan, potong jalan, potong jalan. So dia buat bak, betul 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 jalan. Ini salah. Ini idea sesat. <laughs> Ideologi sesat. Sebab apa? Sebab dia tak faham bahasa Inggeris. Ha, kita boleh tengok peserta daripada negara tu dia, dan expert dia juga tak faham bahasa Inggeris. Dan bahasa Inggeris juga penting sebab bila awak menang, bila awak menang gold medal, awak akan diinterview oleh media-media uh, dan juga macam-macam jenis orang. So awak perlulah berbahasa Inggeris sikit. Uh, dan kena ada that sense of confident level dan and also dalam dalam world skill itself. Kita uh, briefing oleh expert semua dalam bahasa Inggeris. Expert macam uh, expert of the own country tak boleh translate kita kan ada translator tapi bila ada translator dia bukan dalam bidang masakan atau bidang cooking bila dia bukan daripada bidang cooking some interpretation dia takkan dapat translate nanti takut um. translate jadi salah mm -hmm. so lebih baik dia menguasai bahasa tersebut supaya dia senang dan faham apa yang telah di, diajukan oleh chief expert semasa pertandingan sebab masa tu expert dah tak boleh bercakap dah dengan kompetitor masa dah masuk sebab kadang-kadang selalunya ada last minute last minute punya information yang perlu dan bagi kira uh, semasa daily briefing of the competitor so kalau dia tak faham masalah ini cakap english atau the chief expert ni cakap english kadang-kadang pula dengan masing-masing ada slang-slang masing-masing lagi pitam dia lagi nak faham jadi kalau dia tak menguasai bahasa inggris dia akan jadi satu masalah di tapak pertandingan sebab kalau dia tak faham dia salah faham dia akan membabitkan markah dia ha, itu masalah tu Ya, akan efek banyak lah ya, Chef ya. Betul. Okey, kita, kita rasa dah tamatlah untuk sesi soal jawab. Uh, mohon maaf, kita banyak sebenarnya dapat soalan-soalan dalam bidang cooking ni. Dia macam hotline betul lah. Hotline? Hotline. <laughs> Tapi kita tak dapat nak jawab semua soalan kena masa yang singkat. Tapi sekiranya ada sebarang pertanyaan ataupun maklumat penganjuran, uh, para peserta bolehlah ke laman web JPK di www.dsg.gov.my slash skills Malaysia atau boleh hantarkan soalan tersebut ke email skismalaysia@gmail.com. Jadi setinggi-tinggi penghargaan kepada uh, Chef Farouk dari Taylor's University College atas pembentangan dan juga perkongsian mesti webinar kita pada petang ini semoga ini memberi manfaat dan juga kefahaman kepada para peserta. Maka dengan ini berakhirlah perkongsian webinar bagi bidang cooking. Jadi sebelum mengundurkan diri kita mohon maaflah daripada pihak sekretariat sekiranya ada sebarang kekurangan dan kita akan cuba memperbaikinya daripada semasa ke semasa untuk sesi-sesi yang mendatang. Akhir sekali, perhatian rakyat 
darurat memerangi COVID-19. Sekian. Assalamualaikum. Waram, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank <music> you.